right? I want to go, I mean, this happened also because of the international context. And I think in that sense, Tuyo is able to do that and to remove the, because the case went to the international court and was removed. So whereas, and this is where Haitians government will ask also be, to be blamed. Because Question, Dr. Sharp. Yeah. When you said the International Court in uh, 1937, we are going pre-United Nations, the League of Nations. Yes, there was, there was a court where, the, where you could bring those cases, and I guess it was the League of Nations or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, but when paying, well, when the negotiation between Haiti and the Dominican Republic happened, the case is removed, and with the complicity of the American. Mm -hmm. But I think... If you put this into context, Tuyo is very astute in that sense because this is the period of time of deportation, uh, expulsion of uh, is beginning, and Tuyo is the only government that participate in one Paris meeting, being present and wanting to accept Jews in order oh, yeah. for people to forget about the massacre. Mm -hmm. and to redeem himself to some extent within the international community. I, yeah, I think you, you talk about that in your book, right? Absolutely. It's, it's just deeply, deeply ironic when, you know, the, the whole idea was, you know, that, that you know, the, the racial logic of the, the massacre was to, you know, to exterminate some of the, the very, very darkest skinned people. And the penance for this mm -hmm. is to bring mm -hmm. in people who are much lighter, mm -hmm. but you know, paradoxically, you know, considered you know, darker mm -hmm. by, by Hitler and his, his mm -hmm. group. And <laughs> yes. it was, it, I mean, it, it, just, it, just, it just boggles the mind. But what they did was, um, they, there's a, a community on the North co Coast called uh, Sosua, and they had very, very strict rules about who could come in. Because the idea was that they were going to get these able-bodied young Jewish men from from Germany to marry Dominican women, so they they, they couldn't be married. Well, that was the intention. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they you know they they were the very strict limits on how many would actually it it only ended up being uh, uh, several hundred, I think about six hundred. So, so not very many met these standards. And they came in, and a lot of them were were more educated, you know, engineers. And what did they do? They gave them this farming land, oh. which, mm -hmm. which didn't make much sense. So a lot of them ended up uh, leaving. And so this, this you know, uh, you know, whiteification project didn't quite work. But it was, I mean, it was cynical on top of cynical on top of cynical. I mean, the, the most amazing form of penance that you can possibly imagine. But, and this is great because this is a, a, an example of how the little small dictator from a small country at a particular moment in time has a lot of power. Right. So at a moment in when European Jewry is fighting for its life and escaping, right? Popular images in Hollywood, Casablanca, for example. And even the United States, Roosevelt, uh, as I've learned in one of my colleagues, the Elen um, Eleanor Roosevelt biographer, Blanche Wiesen Cook, where he turns, they, the government turns back a boatload mm -hmm. of Jews. There's, you know, what to do? There's a humanitarian crisis. And in 1938, there's a famous conference in Evian, France, and there were delegates from all over the Western republics, and they're saying, what do we do with Jews? And no, nobody seems to come out and wants to accept Jews. In there. Mm -hmm. And the only delegate, mm -hmm. the only the delegate, only one. is a Dominican Trujillo representative. And he raises his hand, he said, we'll take 100,000 Jews right now. <laughs> <laughs> so in the end, Michelle is right that it was only five or 600. Mm -hmm. But imagine how much that currency was worth to Trujillo and to Roosevelt, who was trying to uh, present a unified hemispheric front, the good neighbor policy, mm -hmm. against, in, in the Western theater in Europe, against Hitler, and then in the Pacific, eventually, after Pearl Harbor in 1941, uh, Japan's imperialistic uh, expansion. So he was very shrewd, because what happens, once he gets on board with the Americans and says, we'll help you out, it's really telling, you know, when FDR says, okay, I hear you, that, what happened in the massacre, the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah. We, we can get over that because in the grand Kissingerian real politics sort of way, right, what's 10,000, you know, uh, people, black, Haitian, Dominican of Haitian descent in DR compared to Auschwitz? or Treblinka, right? Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. the rationale. And the crazy part right. was that FDR wasn't even 
accepting people. Right. 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 That, right. I mean, right. Yeah. Right. Well, you could go to the Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or to Cuba. Wow. Well, well, like, so and and, that's, be, and, and yeah. that's very important. Yeah. But, but I, I was wondering, always wonder, I mean, yes, one has an image of a dictator, but he has advisor. He has people that are also talking, instru making instrumental those policy or, or designing, because I don't think Trujillo is the one driving crazy and making those decisions. He has a group of people that work with them, including militaries. And, and that kind of massacre is not the other, it's not his decision only. I think it was a strategy. Mm -hmm. It was uh, from the ruling groups, in, including the military in the Dominican Republic, to have that. Yeah. Because I don't think we can explain the massacre of that, of that size uh, only by the decision right. of one person. That book has to be written because it would be fascinating to get, for example, generals and all these advisors saying, you know, what do we win, you know, what do we gain, what do we lose by you know, ordering a massacre. But while we do this, w w that's a lot of speculation what could have been said. But what we do know is that the border and Port-au-Prince as a center of anti-Trujillo mm -hmm. space was, was palpable, oh, right? Wow. Is, mm -hmm. right? I mean, where, where, where did everybody escape to, right? I mean, it was not just San Juan or Puerto Rico. Everybody, mm -hmm. you crossed the border. You go into into uh, into Port au Prince, and geographically, I mean, Dominicans forget about this, right? I mean, you go, you know, when you go, you go to DR. What do they say? Go to Santo Domingo. Go to Santiago. Go to Punta Cana. Go to right. Right. you don't even talk about the border for me, which is beautiful, right? But geographically, from the border to Santo Domingo, it's six or seven hours mm -hmm. from the south, right? I mean, and even if you go to Dajabon, you take one of those Greyhound Caribe tours, it could be also, you know, from, you know, from Dajabon to Santiago, three hours, and then three another hours to the capital. So you're talking about six or seven hours. But from the southern border, Dominican border to Port-au-Prince, it's not more than two hours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. right? So that fear of mm -hmm. being vulnerable was not just unique to Trujillo, right? It was, right? Historically, mm -hmm. the fear that many Latin American elites too also had about w how they viewed the border, right? The border as barbarous, the border as backwards, the border as non-white. The difference is, as, as San Miguel talks about in his book, the Puerto Rican scholar, Imagine Island, Isla mm -hmm. Imaginada, he says, where Latin, where Latin American elites, like in Brazil, they see like a... Uh, the Cunhas or Sertão, the, back, the rebellions in the backlands with the Canuda rebellions in the 1900s, the, the racial other it, are black and mulatto Brazilians, mm -hmm. right? In DR, that otherness doesn't get transposed to the black Dominican. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The black well, other well, becomes, the, yeah, the, well, it, it, it becomes, it's there, it's there. That's the reason right. why you create a, a category, a racial category of Absolutely. Indian. Yeah. So there is no, I was up to 1987 mm -hmm. in the, the Dominican census, the cate, there is no black. The only category of black are in parenthesis Haitian. Mm -hmm. So every, so you, you completely, yeah. so, so when one is looking at the relationship with Haitian, it's also, it has to do also with your minor, with your racial, they are not minority, but they are majority. But now, going into that aspect, yeah. because uh, obviously we're bringing this to the present time, and obviously it's, it's my concern because mm -hmm. I really want to go there. But I just want to make clear that the, in terms of the sanctions that were happening after this, after this event happened in 1937, we have the balance that we did in terms of having like this trading of accepting the Jews from Europe. But there were any other sanctions from the international community? No. To no. 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 There is any claims from the Haitian government no. to be compensated? No, no, no. no. Not at all. And the League of Nations is a damning report because, yeah. I mean, legally, I mean, you, there is no right, statute of limitations to say, and they got off scot free, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really ironic mm -hmm. because we live in an age now where, right, there's a value to remembering, mm -hmm. right? So that things don't happen again. Um, and for me, the massacre is very important, right? I wasn't born in DR. I was born and raised in the United States. I'm an American, but also more Dominican-American. But I grew up 
watching documentaries of genocide mm. and how states like the Syrian government today try to negotiate or control through violence their you know dissent all right the dissenters or marginal racial religious minorities and for me it's it's about justice it's like how can you do this um, and I think that the victims also deserve uh, us to acknowledge them. I mean, that's one way that I think we can be proactive even in, in death and even 75 years after the fact.